This is a presentation on how to set up DB2 Performance Expert server on a Unix or Linux environment. Let's begin with the architecture. Performance Expert has two components, PE Client and PE Server. The client is very easy to install, is Windows based, and is not covered in this presentation. The PE Server requires a few more steps and can be a bit complicated unless the correct steps are followed. There are three principal prerequisites prior to installing PE Server. They are 1. DB2 for LUW instance installed. Minimally, it needs to be version 9.1, but it is recommended that version 9.5 or better is installed. 2. At least 150 megabytes of space for the installation software after it is untarred. And 3. Java driver JDK 1.5. Unfortunately, many times we are asked to install PE Server on servers already utilized for other needs. Consequently, there have been occasions where already installed software on the server has an incompatible or back-level Java driver. When this occurs, you may need to have some discussions with the server administrator on some options. PE Server will not work with older drivers. The installation steps consists of Step 1, installing the PE Server software Step 2, create the PE Server data repository and this is a two-phase process Step 3, connect up the monitored servers and add the monitored databases this also is a two-phase process Step 4, turn on any DB2 for LUW event monitoring and Step 5, start the PE Server We start with step one, install the PE server software. You will need a true root access to do the server. You're going to be installing PE server on the collecting server. The installation directory, as mentioned before, should be a file system with a minimum of 150 megabytes. The server should also have DB2 for LUW installed, mentioned earlier. We recommend using the dash console option which starts the PE install in console mode. If you do not specify this, it will put up the install shield uh, when PE install starts and you will get a graphical user interface mode. If the graphical user interface mode is used, then you must remember to, to export your display. Most customers do not want to take the time to export the display and start X Windows on their Windows machines, by the way. Once the software is untarred, check the install directory for the installation software directories. Additionally, check for the two Java files shown on this, on this uh, foil, shown in red. Use the dash console option to get around install shield. Follow the instructions when prompted, and in this case, press enter. The installation will install in default directories. It is recommended to use these defaults. If in doubt, work with the server administrator to, to determine if these names are appropriate. At this point, enter a 1 to continue. Make sure that you, ins that you read all informational text, and there is more on this foil. Enter a 1 to continue. This shows the license agreement. At this point, enter a 1 to continue. This foil shows how we specify the default path for the installation of the PE server executable binaries. Taking the default, we then enter 1 to continue. This text shows the calculated size of the installation, purely informational. Verify there is enough available space in the file system assigned to this directory path. Enter 1 to continue. The installation proceeds when you see the percentage progress bar shown on this foil. Upon completion, enter a 3 to finish. We move to step 2, which is creating the PE server data repository. We know that we have to have root authority in order to do this process. The next three slides describe three possible scenarios for installation. Performance Expert collects data in two ways. First, by snapshots to the monitored instances, 
and second by event monitors such as the deadlock monitor which is a part of DB2LUW. In order to collect the data, Performance Expert Server makes a connection to the monitored server and instance, runs all required snapshots, then disconnects. In addition, data is also exchanged by collecting event monitor events from the collection repositories on the monitored server. PE can collect these event monitor events from either a shared file system or by a file system repository on the monitored server. This example shows a shared file system. In this example, we see that uh, the event monitors are collected by data exchange with the monitored server as opposed to a file system. And in this final example, we show how you can set up an all-in-one server installation. This would be very typical when demonstrating Performance Expert. All that is missing from this picture is the PE client. To start this build process, use the program PE Centralize, followed by the name of the DB2 for LUW instance. Like many text-based messages, the PE software provides an element of self-discovery, so be cognizant of the messages and verify before moving on to the next process. During the self-discovery, many default values are auto-filled, but you need to be aware of these defaults and what they will do. In this example, there is a default group name and working directory. You have the option of overriding them, but it is recommended to take the defaults if possible. Again, be cognizant of the messages. Once you get to the point of the repository build, it is recommended that you configure later. Many system administrators are really not thrilled about letting a non-system administrator having root authority. So we like to get past any root required installation processes as fast as possible. Choose option one and press enter. The PE centralized completes, so we are now ready for the second phase of PE server installation, and that is building the repository. This process is performed as instance owner. Keep the default of db2pe for a database name. This is the path of the location of the db2pe database. It can be overwritten should it be required. As for the table space, use the default. The db2pe database is created on the instance on the PE server. You'll receive this informational message as the creation continues. At this point, you can start adding the monitored instances and servers but you'll need some information about the port settings, so consider exiting at this point. So to recap where we are now, the PE server software binaries are installed with any path settings, and the DB2 PE database repository used by the PE server is installed on the DB2 for LUW instance on this PE server. We now move to step three. First, let's have a discussion on definitions. PE server considers a monitored instance in the same C server as local and a monitored instance in a different server as remote. Consequently, when you add a local instance, you use the add loc inst and remote with add remote inst. The next slide shows...